Okay, so you have made a UI library and you want to put it onto a website somewhere, right? How do you do that? Well, I was thinking of a few ways of doing it. And the first thing that came to mind was GitHub pages. Super simple, easy to do, but has one problem. You need to have your actual website committed into your repository. And I don't want to do that because it's kind of dirty. So the next thing I thought was, hey, um, Storybook has their own hosting website. Let me try that one. So this is a chromatic. Storybook made it. They use it, they recommend it. They make it easy to use with your Storybook projects. But then again, it has one big thing that I didn't like. It says free, but only if you're using the Chromatic domain. If you want your own subdomain, it is $149 a month. That's a lot of damage. But wait, couldn't you just have a Caradian point to Chromatic? Well, I tried that and it didn't work. Went, went something like this. Hey, I'm looking for this website. Um, Sorry, I don't know where that is. I guess it makes sense because they want it to be a, a paid thing. So I thought to myself, I've already used Netlify, Vercel, and there's another major one that I haven't really looked at yet, and that is AWS Amplify. All right, so here I am at the AWS Amplify console. You want Amplify hosting, get started, GitHub, continue. This is the project. I think I've already given permission before, so that's why it didn't ask me for it. Select a branch, main, and we're not using a monorepo, so next. Okay, uh-huh. No, we don't want the deploy all files, but is our npm run build actually pointing to where we want it to go? Uh, nope, we don't want npm run build. We want npm run build storybook. That's the one. And the files, mm, I don't think we want to do that. We want to just deploy the files that storybook outputs. <laughs> I've forgotten where storybook builds to, so let's just take a quick look by building storybook. And yeah, it's taking its time. Okay, it's all done. It's uh, in storybook static. Go back to the Amplify console and then do this. I think it's this way. That makes sense. No, actually I want base directory. Uh-huh. No, I want all files. And I want the base directory to be storybook static. I'm hoping that works. Let's try that. Any advanced settings? Uh, uh, do I have any environment variables? I do not. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, package reversion override? No, um, we'll leave that as is. All right, next. Okay, save and deploy. Ah, <laughs> name should be between three and 1,024 characters. Okay, we can change that. Uh, Let's do that. They should really warn you about that at the beginning. Oh, it's, wait, why, huh, uh, uh, why is it really, really, I don't know why it does this. You know what we can do? <laughs> Let's go and, uh, what does it say? It is initialized true. Uh, is there any way we can, aha, uh -huh, disabled. Let's just remove the disabled. Does that work? Can I click on it? No, I can't click on it. How about, um, ah, this one, button disabled. Let's, let's remove this button disabled class. Aha, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cheers to all the AWS engineers who are face palming at this moment. Okay, we wait for this thing to provision, build, deploy, and verify. There is another thing that we can do though, because obviously this is going to deploy to main dot some long name amplify app.com. We don't want that. The whole point of doing this and not using chromatic is because I want to actually have it under the ui.creating.com domain. So we can go through the, pro the process of setting that up real quick. There's actually a nice little button here called add a custom domain with a free SSL certificate. Thank goodness. Adding SSL certificates are really easy now. Let's add a domain. The domain name is creating.com. Let's go to UI, the subdomain, configure domain. Yeah, we don't want to do the redirect. And then let's save that. Nice. The next thing is it's creating the SSL certificate, but then I will be able to uh, view the DNS records that I need to make in order to, ah, there we go. That's the thing that I want. The next thing I need to do is go to route 53, route 53. There we go. So we'll go there, go to your hosted zones and go to creating.com. We're going to create a record. The first thing we want to do is the UI creating.com subdomain. We want to have a C name that points to here for both UI and www.ui. Okay. So we can go here. UI, go here, that's a C name, everything else is good, add another record, www.ui, and then do C name, they're both the same. Yes, create records. Oh, a record with the specified name already exists. What did I do wrong? Let's go back here. Do I already have one for UI? I do. What, huh? Is that the one I entered? That is the one I entered. What's going on? <laughs> I, I pressed it and it already is there. It already exists. Very confused. Good enough though. Did it automatically add it? <gasps> I think that's what it did. 
it automatically added it. Oh, okay, never mind. Bravo to AWS for, for having that automated, but they should really tell you that they're going to do it. I don't know. What do I have to complain about? Did it for me. Thank you very much. Okay, we are waiting for domain activation. It's getting close though. Let me see, uh, did the build finish? The build failed. Oh no, what happened? Front end, error. error. Cannot find re module react slash package JSON. Of course, of course things don't run smoothly the first time. But really that's the nice thing about watching me do it is you get to see all the things go wrong. Completed the pre-build and then it's starting phase build. Failed to load preset. Aha, uh -huh. cannot find module react slash, oh, it disappeared. What? Okay, we're back. Okay, cannot find module. Let's just try looking this up. Ah, okay. We have exactly the issue that we need. This this is from Storybook. They have the exact same problem. Check if you have added React as peer, part of peer dependencies. React DOM installed as a dev dependency. Okay, they're, they're using Preact, so that, that's not really a, a, a concern of ours. But yeah, okay, we need to have React DOM. If we're gonna be doing some sort of rendering stuff, we definitely need to have that. All right, well, do I have it as a dev dependency? Well, it doesn't help if I'm not gonna put React and React DOM into my dev dependencies. I think I also also need styled components and I need TypeScript. All of this stuff should be in my dev dependencies because I need them in order to build Storybook. Cool, okay, now all of this stuff is in and then now in our AWS Amplify console, we should have a new build building. Yes, all right. Uh, isn't automation just the greatest thing in the world? <laughs> the build still failed. Okay, what was it this time? Okay, the first error is can't resolve react-is. Okay, just install it as a dev dependency and hope for the best. Okay, we're farther than we were before. Oh, did it work? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it worked. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things just aren't as straightforward as you would like them to be, but hey, it's a learning experience. And just to confirm the thing that used to work in the past still works. Yes, it works. So just to go over what solved the problem, we had a whole bunch of peer dependencies that were, actually I think I need to have React is as part of this as well. Yeah, let's do that. I don't know, better, better be safe. So the first thing we did was add these, all of these dependencies that are in peer dependencies, added them to our dev dependencies. The one that, the one that I don't think was very clear why it wasn't working was this React is. I'm okay not looking into it for now. The point is this site works, I'm happy. And now we can move on to something else. But if you were wondering how I made this website in the first place and how I use Storybook.js, I made a video about it and it's linked right there, 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 there. <laughs>